Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and I was at a used furniture store recently when I saw this map that really just inspired me. But before I talk about that, if you're curious as to what I was doing at the used furniture store, clearly I was buying myself some pillows and a painting off a tree or something, and my lovely cow, and uh, yeah, I don't have a fully properly set up thing here, so this video is gonna be very different, but I'm gonna try and use the power of editing to make this a better than normal video. So let's see how that goes down as I show you this map again, which although this one says it was from the 1970s, uh, the map in store was clearly just that old. Maybe it was a used map of uh, area codes that was just from the 1970s, but the reason I could tell that it was so old is because of the fact that Nevada and Oregon had one area code code, while states like Kansas and Oklahoma have two. This is clearly an outdated view of the population, and so when you look at a more modern area code map, sure, it's much more complex, this is a 2022 one, but you can see just how much the population has grown, that they've had to add more area codes for the US. So, if you're from any other country, by the way, we have area codes for land li lines in the UK, but most other phone systems don't have one. The From someone's mobile number, the only thing you can work out is the network provider they're on in the UK, but in the US, the three digits that start your phone number after plus one, but no one in America knows that, but the three digits that start your phone number are actually the three digits that define where you are from. You can work out someone's location just from their phone number, or at least you can work out the location where they registered it. Um, I think living in Las Vegas with my lovely cow and my, my poorly furnished place, which by the way, it's going well, thank you for asking. I do love living in paradise, but... Um, <laughs> If this isn't paradise, I don't know what is. But uh, the interesting thing about um, the, the uh, living in a place like this, which is very transient, you see a lot of far, uh, outside license plates, and you see a lot of interesting numbers that don't start with 702, or like this map might suggest, even 775 for the rest of the state. And so it's weird to me that you can tell where someone's from, from these three digits, but it's an identifiable characteristic. And obviously, I think just looking at this map, you can see the population explosion in California. Clearly, there's only... What is it? It's a 10-digit phone number, there's three digits. There's clearly only a million people that can fit into a given area code. So you can see that like while, uh, you know, states like Wyoming, still, if you're from Wyoming, you have 307 no matter what. But then if you look at just the California Bay Area, San Francisco has its own uh, area code of 415. Then San Mateo has its own area code. San Jose, Oakland, Concord. It's crazy to look at just how many area codes there are because of how many people live in those areas. But even if you go to the east side, the country. Look at Florida and how many it has. Look at even Alabama and Mississippi and, you know, look, look at these states and uh, Texas is the weirdest one. It looks like a gerrymandered map, but these are just area codes and you'll start to realize that, wow, this is interesting. Also interesting, in my opinion, is the fact that the Idaho area code doesn't cover all of Idaho, but does cover some of Oregon and the Washington area code covers some of Idaho, which is very interesting lines they went down there. Also, if you look at this map carefully, you'll see that Canada actually has area codes within the US format. This is not some bug, this isn't just including their information to be curious. If you go back to the map from the 1970s, you'll see how down in the right corner there, there are 809 area codes that explain that actually, even though, you know, these states and these provinces all get these codes, at that time, it seemed as though Canadian provinces all seemed to have one besides Ontario and Quebec. But if you, and whatever's happening in the east over there. But uh, as you can see, uh, there are actually a whole bunch of different countries and territories, including, again, like real countries like St. Lucia, Trinidad, Tobago, uh, but also just territories like the Cayman Islands, etc. All of those countries shared the 809 phone code at the time, which is weird because Hawaii got its own one with 808. And that's a, that's a very interesting thing. Nowadays, all of these countries uh, within the North American continent minus Mexico and a few other sh let's just say North America minus Latin America is the using the plus one area code which means they all fall under the same US area code system which is fascinating to me you can call a Jamaican person without needing to add an international dialing code which is super super weird because if I show you this map right here this is the international dialing code map I live in the UK and my number starts with plus four four if I'm dialing internationally or it starts with zero if I'm dialing domestically, right? Like if, if I'm, if, if you give me your mobile number, you go 07993488, etc. But if you're giving a foreigner or anyone from another country your code, it's plus four four seven nine two three, whatever I just said. And so um, this is something I've always just known as that plus four four is the UK and plus one is the US or Canada. I assume they invented the system. Oh, I'm sitting on my toes and it hurts. Uh, I assume they invented the system, if I'm being honest with you. Like, yeah, I, I'm trying to make this setup look 
like it's professional and my bed isn't just a mattress on the ground, but I'm sorry. I'm giving it away right now. I'm actually just on my knees right now before I was like that weird sitting you can do. I could probably cross my legs and do it this way. No, this is this is too low. You know, it's it's just life is a struggle when you try and make videos about maps that you find interesting. So, oh, Christ. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can't, can't sit on my toes anymore. Anyway, so if you look at this map, it's incredibly interesting because you'll see that like, okay, there is the, you know, like looking around the world, every country has a dialing code. I knew plus one was the US. I knew Canada was included for some reason. And I knew plus four, four was the UK, but I didn't realize how complex a system there really was. I thought they were just randomly assigned, but it turns out there is a logic. As you can see from the color coding, North America, minus the Latin American countries and a few others, are all labeled plus one. The South America, sorry, Africa gets plus two as its prefix. Um, Europe gets plus three and plus four. I have no idea how they decide to divide it. Then there is South America plus Latin America on plus five. Then there is plus seven just for Russia and Kazakhstan. And then there's plus eight plus nine for Asia and plus six for Australasia plus also Thailand for some reason. And honestly, this map is fascinating, right? Because it see, it shows you how different countries around the world kind of see them. You know, like, I guess it kind of defines areas like, why is Mongolia on the Middle East and Indian subcontinent area code? And, uh, you know, why, why is Thailand on the Australian one? But the most confusing one of all to me is, why is Greenland on the <laughs> on the African coast. You know, some people debate whether Greenland is really a part of Europe or North America. I've not heard someone say that it should be a part of Africa until just now. And even weirder is the Faroe Islands are also on the 298 area code, while Denmark is on plus 45. Which, side note, if we look at just, again, I don't know how they decided which countries would be plus three and plus four, besides maybe saying that plus four gets to be the good countries in Europe, because as you can see, 40 is Romania, because uh, it's even weirder, because then how do they decide the ordering? Because 40 is Romania, 43 is Austria, 41 is Switzerland, uh, 44 is the UK, 45 Denmark, 46 Sweden, 47 Norway, and then 48 Poland, 49 Germany. How did they decide on that? How did they reach... <laughs> that? I, I, it just makes no sense to me that those countries are all sequentially numbered. Well, if you look at the purple countries in Europe, it's like, okay, so there's the big countries get one. Why does Ukraine have to get 380 while, you know, uh, I don't know, Portugal can have 35? It's very, very odd stuff in my opinion. Also, why is Russia and Kazakhstan Kazakhstan on the same area code of just plus seven. They had the whole spectrum of 71, 72, 73, and the whole of both countries use seven, but Belarus is on the European system? How did we assign these numbers? When was it done? It's just so interesting to look at, right? I, I, I you know, like looking at Australia being 61 and New Zealand being 64, why, why did Indonesia get to be 62? And, you know, I, I just, uh, y the more you look, the more confusion you get. I just, <laughs> and also, you know, going back to America, why is it that America and Canada and a few Caribbean countries are on plus one? I just don't understand it at all. Also, if you, yeah, if you look cl really closely at this map, you can see that, yeah, certain, certain Caribbean countries don't have their own dialing code. They have their own American area code. So you can tell that someone, even if you're in Nevada, let's say, you can tell someone is calling you from Jamaica if you happen to know their area codes. They actually have two, it seems, right now, which is just, I, you know what, this is endlessly interesting, and then uh, we, we could talk about this more. Why, why is, you know, why is Belize on the, on the Latin American area code, and why, even more interestingly, why are there a bunch of British territories in the US's code? In fact, just another interesting map right here, because, you know what, we're on a roll talking about the weird things that were assigned by people long ago that you basically can't change now without you know, building an entire infrastructure from scratch, is plug types, right? This is what plug types look like. Have you seen this map? Why is it that, you know, the... <laughs> how, how do we decide on, on these things? Why is Switzerland on a different plug type to the rest of Europe? Why are the UK, Ireland sharing a plug type with Ghana, Sudan, uh, is that Rwanda, and uh, maybe Kenya over there? Like, obviously, it's like, okay, some former... British colonial countries, but then China? <laughs> it's very confusing very quickly. Uh, this map is actually kind of inaccurate. Like, I noticed, like, well, China, I know they do have British plug sockets in some of their country, but it's not exclusively British plug sockets. This is a more accurate map, but you can see why this one is much less sexy than just going back to this one. But if you want to be more accurate, most of the world uses a combination of plug sockets with really only the UK, uh, North America, 
and Australia being dead set on their one plug socket. Also, Switzerland plug sockets aren't that different to European ones. Like, they don't always work the same. Sometimes they, they I, I don't understand. You need adapters, but yet also every time I've pl tried to plug one in, it just works. Was I doing something wrong? I don't understand. Plugs are confusing to me. But the, uh, <laughs> like, what, what is the deal with that, right? Also, you'll notice here's another thing where the, uh, the, the Cayman Islands and Turks and Caicos and, uh, say the British Virgin Islands, they use the American plug socket. It's hard to see on this map, but it's true. We'll Google and confirm that. Um, but like, as well as, uh, that being true, the British Virgin Islands use the American plug socket. They've got an American dialing code. They use the US currency as well. I really, I never realized until looking into border restrictions when, as it turns out, United States visitors can visit these British territories for longer than me, a British person can. Um, United States citizens, I, I hope I said. But um, yeah, it's really interesting that there are some parts of the UK where they use the US dollar, US area codes, US plugs, and I mean, they probably speak American at this point, right? Anyway, with that said, uh, there's one last thing I wanted to share with you. It was just something interesting I was looking into, because of course, I'm living in car dependent uh, the United States. I'm in the 25th biggest city, and it's still car dependent, which shows you just how, I, I don't know, like, people love their cars here and they bring them with them wherever they go. And uh, so I was looking at, you know, looking at a Tesla. You know, everyone loves to live a, look at a Tesla. Tell me, tell me in the comments down below a nice six paragraph comment section on why you like Elon Musk or dislike him and why you think people who think the opposite thing are wrong would love to hear that. Please, please get to me. But, um, <laughs> one of the interesting things, if we look at this map, is you'll see, uh, this is the Tesla supercharger map, because one of the real fears people still have with electric vehicles is, uh, it's called range anxiety, but it's the idea of, like, what if I don't have enough battery to get somewhere, and it dies in the middle of nowhere? This is something you haven't really had to worry about with petrol cars for super long, although, for what it's worth, I did a road trip through the United States on a petrol-powered car, sorry, a gas-powered car, um, but... <laughs> <laughs> that was slightly, slightly southern, slightly New Yorker right there. But, um, I, I did a road trip through the United States, and the only slot where I was confused is I was going from, I think it was Wendover to Eli, and it just said, oh, there's 130 miles of no gas, be warned. And I was like, yeah, that, that would have been useful before I left the civilization. Luckily, I had just filled up. But it's weird, yeah, there, there are some stretches of the US where you still need to make sure you fuel up just in case. And with uh, electric, obviously, it's going to be more of that case. But if you look at this map, you can see, whoa, most of the country you'd like to go to has Tesla superchargers everywhere. This is just their one network, by the way. This isn't, obviously, every other electric charger. However, looking at this map, you can kind of see population density, East Coast, West Coast, Texas, and then a few cities in, like, Colorado, for example. But let me show you Nevada. Let's, let's zoom in on Nevada real quick. As you can see, looking at this state, okay, so down there is Las Vegas with all the charges in the world. But Nevada is a very low, low population state if you remove the one big city. And uh, as you can see, this is one of those states you cannot do a road trip through an electric. There is a charger about to open in Eli, Nevada, which might allow you to drive up that eastern section. But otherwise, unless you're driving down the west or the north of the state, you can't charge your vehicle, and so it might die unless you have a big enough battery to drive the length of Nevada. Side note, you know, I just want to share this with someone. It's, and you know, what, second channels where I share weird, nerdy geography facts. I, I didn't realize how big Nevada was, but if you measure the distance from, say, Las Vegas to Wendover, basically north to south, but not even entirely, it's like greater than the distance from London to Scotland. I, Northern Nevada is further away than Scotland is normally. I, my brain just doesn't comprehend that correctly. Like, America's big. Has, it, has anyone ever mentioned that? I feel like they don't. No one ever tells you that America's big. Speaking of things in America, while we're talking about electric cars, I have to mention, because Americans love to talk about gas prices. They sure do be high these days, am I right, fellas? Sorry, I'm from Southern Nevada, so I have a little bit of an accent. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, Southern Nevada, it's it's the South. Anyway, um, the, the interesting thing, if you look at this gas... Uh, I, I was just looking up... I was trying to look up a network of gas stations, and I found this price map, and my God, wow, as it turned out, uh, for a whole gallon of the dinosaur juice, it's it used to be so cheap all the way across the US. I don't know how old this map must have been, but even in California, it's $2.73. $2.37 here. Wow, as it turns out, gas has gone up in price. But here's an interesting thing, because I, I was trying to find a map of all the gas stations in the US. I couldn't find one, but just ExxonMobil. This is just one of the gas companies. This is 
that you know this is the equivalent of like a Tesla supercharger network. As you can see, they don't cover the entire state of Iowa, or I think that's uh, maybe Kansas. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, and a little bit of New Mexico, but as you can see, they don't cover these entire states, also Hawaii and uh, Alaska, but they do cover everywhere else crazily. This is showing you every red dot is when there are five or fewer gas stations within a 10 mile radius, and the black dots are when there are greater than five, just Exxon Mobil stations. That is, that, uh, I, uh, see, I'm saying it American, because th this is the one company. I don't like that Americans say mobile, like mobile. But this is the one company where that's actually valid, right? Exxon Mobil. Uh, anyway, so, <laughs> just have to say, you know what? Should I pick on more American pronunciations instead of looking at this map some more? Yeah, why not? Let's do that. So, uh, yeah, isn't it crazy just the amount of infrastructure there is around petrol cars? Like, even when it, people complain, like, oh, it costs so much to fill up nowadays. You ever realize how much it costs to build the infrastructure and then to dig up that much oil from the ground and then to put it in barrels, put it on the back of a truck, which that truck uses oil by the way, right? Put, send that to a refinery, have that be refined, have that then shipped over to the, and then, and then, you know, like everyone's making a profit, including the government making a massive cut and it still only costs $5. At one point that cost $2 and some number of cents. Is there a state on $1? There is, Texas, it cost $1.95. That's, that's mind-blowing, right? If that's not mind-blowing to you, then, you know what, maybe you don't actually think about things in the world. You just like being upset that things are different. Because, <laughs> you know, actually, rant at the end here. Because I, I, think, I think gratitude is a good way to live that life, right? Like, to appreciate the good things you have, rather than to criticize all the bad things you don't. Which is easy for Toy Cat to say when he lives in his millionaire mansion with his cow painting. And, uh, you know what? You know, I, it might look pretty bad here, but let me show you. I'm drinking bottled water. This, this, this costs 10 cents a bottle when the tap is like free, but my tap tastes funny, like genuinely concerningly funny. So, um, millionaire toyka over here being appreciative of the small things in life, like his cow. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a, a really interesting uh, perspective thing about everything. Like, in the UK, we've seen the price of electricity. I think it's, it's, it went up by 50%. It's going up by another 25 to 30%. It's basically doubled in the price of a year. And everyone here is like, oh, electricity's gonna go up 8% this year. Didn't it cost enough already? The price of electricity, if we go on nvenergy.com, there's only one energy supplier for the whole of Nevada, apparently. Very weird that America's the super competitive country that also says no, only one power company. But anyway, the, this is the price for electricity on nvenergy.com. This is the this is the capped price. This is the legal maximum that is effectively the legal minimum because everyone's charging it in the UK. Look how different the prices are. It's crazy. And that's the cool thing about being an outsider is you can appreciate things from scratch rather than being like, oh, the... The, I, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not as good as it used to be. Because, you know, there are some things in life that are always going to get slightly worse. Because other things are getting so much better. And do you want to focus on the things getting worse? Heck yeah, I do. And that's what we're going to do in future videos. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the new editing. Cost me some good money. The, these videos used to cost me zero dollars to make. This, this cost me more than zero dollars. But, hopefully, you click clacketing the like button, or I don't know, give me some Patreon money or something. I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna spend it poorly on cow paintings if you do. <laughs> help, help till I can't get furniture by, uh, I don't know, super thanksing today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Unless I don't. Maybe the water's poisonous, I'm gonna die. Who knows for sure? Until next time. Goodbye. Second channel, don't care.